Chapter five. If any of the people are called to testify about something they have witnessed, but they refuse to testify, they will be held responsible and be subject to punishment. Or if they touch something that is ceremonially unclean, such as the dead body of an animal that is ceremonially unclean, whether a wild animal, a domesticated animal, or an animal that scurries along the ground. They will be considered ceremonially unclean and guilty, even if they are unaware of their defilement. Or if they come into contact with any source of human defilement, even if they don't realize they have been defiled, they will be considered guilty as soon as they become aware of it. Or if they make a rash vow of any kind, whether its purpose is for good or bad, they will be considered guilty even if they were not fully aware of what they were doing at the time. When all of the people become aware of their guilt in any of these ways, they must confess their sin and bring to the Lord as their penalty a female from the flock, either a sheep or a goat. This will be a sin offering to remove their sin, and the priest will make atonement for them. If any of them cannot afford to bring a sheep, they must bring to the Lord two young turtle doves or two young pigeons as the penalty for their sin. One of the birds will be a sin offering, and the other will be a burnt offering. Must bring them to the priest, who will offer one of the birds as the sin offering. The priest will wring its neck, but without severing its head from the body. Then he will sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering against the sides of the altar, and the rest will be drained out at the base of the altar. The priest will offer the second bird as a whole burnt offering, following all the procedures that have been prescribed. In this way, the priest will make atonement for those who are guilty, and they will be forgiven. If any of the people cannot afford to bring young turtle doves or pigeons, they must bring two quarts of choice flour for their sin offering. Since it is a sin offering, they must not mix it with olive oil or put any incense on it. They must take the flour to the priest, who will scoop out a handful as a token portion. He will burn this flour on the altar, just like any other offering given to the Lord by fire. This will be their sin offering. In this way. The priest will make atonement for those who are guilty, and they will be forgiven. The rest of the flour will belong to the priest, just as with the grain offering. Then the Lord said to Moses, "If any of the people sin by unintentionally defiling the Lord's sacred property, they must bring to the Lord a ram from the flock as their guilt offering. The animal must have no physical defects, and it must be of the proper value in silver as measured by the standard sanctuary shekel. They must then make restitution for whatever holy things they have defiled by paying for the loss plus an added penalty of twenty percent. When they give their payments to the priest, he will make atonement for them with the ram sacrificed as a guilt offering, and they will be forgiven. If any of them sin by doing something forbidden by the Lord, even if it is done unintentionally, they will be held responsible. When they become aware of their guilt, they must bring to the priest a ram from the flock as a guilt offering. The animal must have no physical defects, and it must be of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for those who are guilty, and they will be forgiven. This is a guilt offering, for they have been guilty of an offense against the Lord.